Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. My name is Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and once again, we have Mr. Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And this case study, as we're bringing it to you, speaks for itself. Water needs oxygen too. Hmm, interesting. Sent to us from our good friends down in Columbia, a pulp and paper mill down there. Uh, this will, actual motor itself provides oxygen to the water. Have you ever heard of what's your biological oxygen demand? No, but I'm intrigued by it for sure. Yeah, so we're going to go through this case study for you and uh, maybe do a little explanation of what this motor does for the process. And with that, with that we'll start off with the first slide. And as always, we like to look at our nameplate information. Yeah, what's the what kind of motor are we dealing with here? Yeah, so we've got a 4 kV motor, 60 hertz, 400 horsepower, and it's a two-pole motor, 35-75 RPM. Always an important little piece of information. Two-pole, high speed, good to know. Yeah, so what are some things when we're looking at nameplate to think about when we're looking at rotors and, and motors specifically? Well, and if we start at the very bottom, I know we kind of kind of hinted around that speed was a, an important part of the nameplate. And, and it is obviously in the design, but when it comes to speed and rotor health, uh, higher speed results in higher centrifugal forces, and this becomes important. And then if we go, of course, up to the, to the uh, first few numbers of bars and slots, these are things that we're going to use uh, with our technology to actually identify critical critical peaks of interest. Um, how critical is it motor? If it's not very critical, well then that may make a difference not so much on whether the rotor is failing faster or slower, but what kind of action you might take as a result. And then the, the, the second to the last, which I can't say enough about, is the design of the rotor. Is it an open or closed bar design? These are things that you should be asking your repair shop for like a birth certificate on return from repair. I want to know these things and it'll help you and, and us even uh, analyze the rotor health. So a good relationship with your repair facility is paramount for the success of your reliability program. We can't stress that enough. So here's our first look at this uh, pull pass sideband. This actually, the reason why we're looking at this asset is there was some vibration data that showed some abnormalities. We take the Emacs out and this is what we find. And we love that correlation. One thing we know for sure is where you know, we may be a second indicator of some mechanical defects. Vibration can sometimes be a second indicator of rotor or electrical defects. But for sure in this situation, unfortunately, the very first electrical online test taken is with this pull pass related, rotor related peak above the red line. Which means? Red is generally bad, red and in this case, no different. We would have liked to have seen some more history on this, right? That, was, that would have been the ideal approach is to see this approaching earlier. And we'll see that by the end of this case study, how important that could have been. Right. Another way to look at it, so we have multiple looks at this asset with different pieces of our technology. So this is our fifth harmonic. Can you explain that? The fifth harmonic, sometimes called the swirl, was perfected by the late Gerald Kleiman, and it is it was something that really helped us out in the early days when we really only looked at pull pass frequency while the motor was running. What we've come to now is, is as many as six different methods of rotor defect, and we like to see three before we suggest yanking the motor out. These peaks of interest here with the big red X on them, uh, are, are driven by somewhat technical description, but, but 180 degree phase angle changes in the rotor flux in the air gap. So not that you need to know all that detail, but the bottom line is those three peaks are good confirming evidence that it's a real rotor bar defect, not something just mechanical creating that earlier pull pass indication. Right. So we encourage our users to go out to that fifth harmonic, and in this case, it would be at 300 hertz look for activity out there. Are there three peaks that are associated with the pole pass sideband frequency? And the nice thing about the software is we're going to X that out for you. We're going to find it for you. Absolutely. And if you're on a drive of 47 hertz, 53 hertz, um, it'll do that calculation for you. It's not always the green axis, which is the fifth harmonic, isn't always going to be a perfect 300, depending on the line frequency. Now, we were able to do some offline testing on this. And one of the things we like to look at is what is the trend of our average inductance. Because we, in a rotor bar defect, we expect it to do what? When you have defects forming on your rotor bars at the end rings throughout the slot, it automatically generates an elevated flux around that break or crack, which ends up causing a rise in your average inductance. And we can see that here. Clearly, we've got some increase in our average inductance. So check. No, we're, we're going down the line of check. We have all right. side bands. 
fifth harmonic activity, average inductance is trending higher. And now we have our whole pass amplitude in our DMOD spectrum. Wow. You know, and, and our preference, as far as all the six methods that we're going to suggest, it is the DMOD spectrum that we tend to focus most on with your larger two-pole motors. Now, this one's not a huge two-pole, but 400 on a two-pole motor is, is going to be considered large. And so, you know, when this thing starts to approach a 0.2.3 dB on the DMOD scale, we start to raise a flag. And this is our best trend indicator. But again, it's the first test, so we'd like to get some more trend on this. Good offline trending. We saw earlier with the inductance, so that helped us with our confidence. So expanding on the offline, we have what we call our rotor influence check. And in this case here, this is a classic, what you described earlier, the change in, in the crack to, cracks in your rotor bar, changing the flux. We really clearly see something here on a rig. Oh, yeah. This, this to us, when we look at this rotor influence check, which is the fifth method that this, this company was providing us, which is an amazing amount of data to clarify rotor defects, this is the classic rotor defect indication where you have varying uh, amplitudes, non-sinusoidal. Okay, this out of a fresh, clean motor is going to be sinusoidal in nature. And you can see these varying inductance values throughout the sinusoid, sinusoid indicating some kind of defect on the rotor. And lo and behold, look at this. Wow, what do you that, think? That, that is some serious uh, air showing up between the uh, rotor and the, and the shorting ring. So we're just going to pan over this rotor and really look at what does it do? What yeah, we see here, right there, you can see. Yeah, this is an area that's supposed to be brazed, welded, soldered, whatever, so that the conductivity between the end ring and the rotor bar are almost zero, uh, or almost perfect. And in this situation, we're seeing air gap, we're seeing loss of metal-to-metal -metal contact. That's going to be a high resistance connection. It's going to create elevated current in the nearby bars, which will then cause each bar next, next bar next to it to work harder until it expands and breaks itself. And in this case, we had six broken bars. Wow. That's pretty significant. So when we're looking for rotor bar detection with our MC Emacs, what are the things that we can look at? What, this is a great list, and this is something from our tip of the week you can get your hands on. And, and know this, if you're concerned about, you know, let's say you got repeated bearing failures or complaints from operation that the motor's taking too long to start up, uh, there's some basic things that, that we provide. Six independent reviews or, or tests that can be performed to, to indicate rotor defect, you don't want to pull a motor out, send it back to the shop, only to be asked if you want a paint job when you can identify it with at least three of these and do it confidently. The first one, motor current signature analysis. That's the pull pass side banner on line frequency. It was the first graph you showed. Uh, the rotor influence check is probably the most, it, I tell you what, it is. it takes a little bit longer. It's a shutdown test where you're turning the rotor but it's, a, it's looking at the actual, almost a, a magnetic image coming off the rotor. Uh, the inrush started. We didn't have a, an example of that during this case study, uh, but is by far one of our preferred data points for a, a broken rotor bar. Through that inrush, it's going to cause a lower initial startup and a longer startup time, and it's easy to identify. Average inductance. They provided us three historical trends of that. That's, you know, if, if the bar's broken, the values are going to go up over time. The modulation for a two-pole motor, again, we mentioned that, you know, that pole pass peak down at the low end of the demand spectrum, we want to see around 0.2, 0.3, and preferably, we'd like to see trend on that, right? And then finally, the, the fifth harmonic uh, swirl effect, as we mentioned, and this, well, there was an example here uh, as the sixth indication of rotor defect. Give us three before you yank the motor out. That's what we're asking for. Well, that brings us to the end of our case study. And as always, we'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us. We can, you can call us at the number on the screen, or you can just visit our website where we have a tremendous amount of information, technical papers, white papers, case studies, tip of the week. Uh, please stop by, have a look, um, and keep us in mind when you have questions about your motors. Thank you so much, and stay safe out there.